To The Point with Michael Williams. Good morning. Coping with the affordable housing crisis. My guest this morning, Patrick Franklin, longtime president and CEO of the Urban League of Palm Beach County. Our focus, a newly released study meant to focus on the critical need to create affordable housing for the people who power our communities and our economy. This week, the Housing Leadership Council presented their Palm Beach County Housing Equity Study. And it was very interesting how the status of our housing disparities here in Palm Beach County, when, when you look at the history of redlining, the history of uh, systemic racism when, when it comes to housing here in Palm Beach County, uh, history dictates to us why we are or where we are today with uh, affordability of homes and why in so many con concentrated areas throughout Palm Beach County, you have concentrated areas of low income housing and the blight of what's going on over the years. And what we're facing with is the disparities in income, disparity in housing, the disparity in education, disparities across the board that really takes us to where we are today with the issues with unaffordability of homes here in Palm Beach County, with the average home almost $600,000 right now, the average W-2 wage earner can't afford it. What do we do? How do we take all that you've spoken about and that history and move forward? It seems such a gargantuan task. We hear about affordable housing efforts, about money. It all, frankly, sometimes seems like just a drop in the bucket. So how do we move forward? Well, we have to look at things like um, when you when you when you get to the point of the valuation of homes in low income areas, how do we do the right accessibility as far as the worth of those homes? And what what's happened is that a lot of our homeowners are being uh, squeezed out of potential wealth. They can't build wealth if you're saying that my house only appraises for X amount of dollars in low income areas, um, and then they're having competition for those um, low supply of homes from so many outside entities, outside corporate buyers, et cetera, that are coming in and buying up all the inventory that's being uh, that we have currently in Palm Beach County. And the workers can't compete. They can't compete with a cash buy at market rate or higher. They get outbid it. So we have to find ways to help these local workers because um, we're running out of inventory here in Palm Beach County. What are some of those ways suggested that you think could work? Um, looking at how homes are, are appraised in low income areas. Yeah. What else? Uh, looking at how we are qualifying potential buyers. Uh, things that we do at the Urban League as far as far as our first time home buyers workshop is qualifying potential families to become homeowners. Right now, the studies show that the denial rate of loans in Palm Beach County for Hispanic and African Americans is almost double that of white residents. So how do we combat that when a, a person of color is denied at two times the rate of anyone else for a home loan? So we have work to do that to educate and prepare our residents to become homeowners. Is that an income-based statistic or do you believe it is an income-based statistic still tinged with racism? I think it's tinged with a whole lot of things, Michael. Um, a lot of our applicants uh, don't have the right documentation. Their credit history is not acceptable according to the standards that are set already. Their um, their income is not at the right level. Their employment history may, may be in and out of um, working and not. So there are many different a areas. Plus, we're still dealing with, and, and, and let's not fool ourselves, we're still dealing with redlining. When, when, when you're looking at, at the horrible aspects of what redlining did to our communities, where lenders- For those unfamiliar, talk a little more about redlining. Redlining is when the government and other agencies came together many years ago to really map out on a map, low-income areas saying that I'm not, I'm not gonna lend, I'm not gonna participate in lending to homes in these areas. And that went on, not only in Palm Beach County, that went on across this country. Mm -hmm. And even though it's been outlawed years ago, those maps are still defined. People still know the boundaries of low-income areas by the train tracks to the east and west, by um, I-95, you name it. We still know where those boundaries are, and lenders still know where those boundaries are. Talk about the public-private partnership that you think needs to come together. And we hear about this, but again, we hear about a kind of a drop here, a drop there. Mm -hmm. What's the sustained public-private partnership that needs to come together? Is it in any way coming together? What positives, if any, did you see out of this big report? 
Well, I, I think once we can show the data and show where the, uh, where the disparities lie, that um, we have this $200 million bond issue that, that's coming through for housing. Um, that's going through the initial phases right now. As we get closer towards bringing developers in and nonprofits in and others in to build these units, that's where, where we're gonna hopefully see a difference. And if we can control the, uh, the value of these homes, that they are affordable to those who, who we're trying to market to, then that's gonna be really the, the, the proof in the pudding. And Mr. Franklin, of course, we broadcast to a five county audience, housing affordability, a big issue across our five counties. And I can also see people sitting there saying, you know, uh, it's too bad, but I have my home. How does this really affect me? But housing affordability goes to the heart of the workforce that ends up powering this economy. So all of us ultimately are impacted. I'd like you to speak to that. Michael, if if we can't have a worker who's who's working here in Palm Beach County, who's working in our service industries, who's who, who's working in our hospitals, who's working as a teacher or a fireman or or a first time responder, if we can't find them housing and they have to travel an hour plus away to find affordable housing to the north, okay, not to the south, to the north of Palm Beach County, that's going to adversely affect their ability to continue to work here in Palm Beach County. We can't afford for a decrease in our in our working staff here in Palm Beach County because the industry is dependent upon those WT wage earners to, to work here to support us. And also housing supports our tax base. It supports all these other small businesses that are connected to us, maintenance, um, all those type of things that, that are associated with, with being a homeowner. All that contributes to our economy. And at the end of the day, we cannot afford to have a segment of our economy not participate and live in this community. Reports come out because not enough was done before, therefore necessitating the need for a new focus, a new report like the one you've described. Why will this one, uh, why will this one be any different, not just filed away and we'll be having the same conversation in a year or two? Well, Michael, for, for those of us who, who have known the facts that are inside this study for years, this just really brings to light and validates the issues. It validates the data points that we've been talking about for a long time, that in order for us to have a strong economy, everyone has to participate. We cannot only uh, we cannot really throw out the bottom end because a strong economy, a strong middle class will always, always support a strong economy. So what we're looking at is 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 how do we make sure that all those who want to become a homeowner. And that, that's how you build wealth. Uh, no matter which way you slice it, wealth is built by being a homeowner. That's the basic principles of wealth building for a family here in America. And if we decide that the bottom end is not gonna participate in this wealth building um, exercise, then the wealth gap between the haves and the have nots are gonna grow wider and wider. Right now, we're at the biggest wealth gap ever in the history of this, con uh, of this country. The biggest between the haves and the have nots. And we can't continue to work like this because something's gonna give. Something's gonna give so, somewhere down, down the line. And um, if we are aware of it right now, why aren't we taking appropriate actions to help the bottom end move forward? Are there any markers per se of a particular note that you feel confident about that this will continue to get attention? What are some markers you all put in place to say we're going to make sure this report doesn't just end up with every other report like it? Well, I think because we did pass a $200 million bond issue to build um, 20,000 affordable homes, yep. um, all this builds the momentum to keep going. Um, at our meeting this week, we had the right people around the table to discuss the issues to make a difference. We had among them, there. among them, we had we had bankers, we had lenders, we had real estate agents, we had um, politicians, we had all those that, that will contribute to the success of this initiative. The Housing Leadership Council is ingrained in this process to make sure that we move forward to to make a difference. Look, we we we're twenty thousand units is a drop in the bucket for what's needed right now. We need three times that many houses, affordable units built for our workers right now. And affordable uh, we, is defined basically kind of what price range, by the way? I would say under under $250,000, under 300,000 easy, but compared you to you have the, 600. Sure, at the median price, uh, which is uh, mind boggling compared to years ago. 
Bottom mm -hmm. line in our last 30 seconds, you at least feel there's enough direction and focus to make sure that this moves forward on such a critical topic. I think so, Michael. I, I think we have to have the, the gift of hope that we will move forward and also get enough people educated and aware of what's happening. I, I think we need to hold more educational meetings to talk about the data that was presented in this study and also think about what are the next steps. The study just gave you the historical background. It gave you the data to, to show why we are at this critical point right now in, in housing in Palm Beach County. Now we need to sit down on a table and talk about the added solutions to rectify the issues that have been identified. Up next is Channel 5 political analyst Brian Crowley will join me. The GOP debate in Miami and the upcoming special session in Tallahassee on tap.